fans. No, not that fans. Another fan. No, not this. A, a different fan. A fan which you could see only underwater. By underwater, I mean under the sea. As we go a little bit further, a little bit further, there, 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 there yes, the sea fan. A group of organisms, otherwise known as Gorgonians, a name derived from the Greek mythical character known as Gorgon Medusa. Yes, that was scary but hot creature. Gorgonians come in different shapes and color, like branching fans, unbranched whips. Yes, the whips. Interestingly, by evolution, Gorgonians belong to a larger group of organisms known as Cnidaria, notorious for their painful stings. Yeah, you guessed it right. But also popular for their exceptional beauty. Just as we go forward, a very, very important note. Gorgonians are animals. Okay, before you show any more crazy faces, let me explain why Gorgonian is an animal. Oh, I'm loving this job. So, major spoilers ahead. First of all, I told you that Gorgonians are related to jellyfish, anemones and corals by evolution. Now pay attention. If you look closely at them, it's okay she won't give you that deadly stare. So under live conditions, you could find tiny tubular projections known as polyps with eight tentacles surrounding its centrally located mouth with which they catch prey and any food particles. The eight tentacles also make them an octocoral. So next time when you say a Gorgonian, see it as a, a tens and hundreds of individual polyps working together, feeding, reproducing and communicating just like we do. Hope you are convinced that Gorgonian is an animal. So tell me, Gorgonians are... These are animals. Thank you, Donald. Now, what makes Gorgonians special? Let's see. Number one, an ecosystem by itself. Gorgonians are known for animal assemblages and associations. The popular example being the association of pygmy seahorse and its host Gorgonian, and many more. It makes our community Ta-da! The Justin Trudeau of Animal World. Stronger, and it will continue to. Number two, rich source of bioactive compounds. Gorgonians are rich sources of bioactive compounds, similar to prostaglandin-like derivatives that are widely popular in pharmaceuticals. Number three, cosmopolitan occurrence. Gorgonians are seen at all depths, from shallow tidal zones to great oceanic depths, from tropical oceans to cold polar waters. Number 4. A model organism. A model organism that can be used to study phylogeny, evolution, zoogeography, animal diversity and variations. Number 5. An ecological indicator. Most Gorgonians are intolerant to salinity, siltation and temperature, hence a useful indicator of changes in such environmental factors. Well, I can keep on enumerating the specialities, but for time being, let's not get too much involved in scientific craps and focus on something else like, wow, an adorable turtle picking on wasted rubbles for no reason. Hey, a beautiful sunset over an island. So that me, through this me, talking to me. Oh, whoa, whoa, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Back in business. 
Now let's get dirty and see some troubling factors affecting these wonderful creatures. Intensive fishing pressure and discards. Large trawlers or fishing nets that entangles the Gorgonian colonies simply uproots them partially or completely. The continued fishing pressure in these areas leaves little time for these organisms to revive and restore. Pollution and excessive siltation which makes the water murky and clogs the polyps which then dies a starving agonizing death. Habitat fragmentation and degradation. Multiple factors like uh, destructive fishing, coral mining, natural calamities like cyclones and tsunamis have deleterious effect on Gorgonian gardens. Lack of taxonomic expertise and research data. Well, this is another major issue. I told you about the visible known threats, but what about the unknown? The undiscovered species, their threats, their distribution, their biology, their ecology, animal associations. Well, there are lots of areas to be covered. We need people like you to get these jobs done. This brings us to the final question. What can we do? Well, just simple things. Spread the word, engage in social outreach programs, and interested people, please, please do research. These wonderful creatures need you to tell their stories. So let us not just be a fan, let's be a sea fan. What's Mr. Adorable doing in my screen? Come on, this is a sea fan show. Show some respect. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Club Sea Fan.